Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce shape files. Um, previously, when we wanted to create a map of the Earth, um, what we did is we used GeoPandas datasets. And GeoPandas datasets actually comes with some um, shape files. For example, there's one for Earth. And, um, and we could look up the paths for that. And uh, the path might be something like this. It would be, if I took a look at it, um, it would be this shape file here. And there were a bunch of files accompanying that and I could read it in. And so what I wanna to do today <clears throat> is find some own, our own shape files online. So I'm not gonna have this piece. Um, maybe I'm gonna get rid of this here. Um, and then I'm gonna to try to download my own shape file. So um, there's various places you could get them. Um, and the City of Madison website, for example, they have this data portal up here in the top right. And, um, and they have all kinds of shape files here. Um, a lot of these are under um, geographic boundaries. So if I go to boundaries, you can imagine browsing through here and uh, finding all kinds of different shape files. Maybe, um, I don't know, what are the street center lines, for example. Um, I, I know I actually know what I'm looking for for the example today. Um, I wanna create a map of Madison. And uh, on the map, I wanna show both the city and uh, the lakes around the city. And then on top of that, I want to show both uh, fire departments and, and police departments. So we're going to try to get this view of um, uh, these city uh, agencies and locations. And, um, and so I know some of these that I'm looking for, um, I've looked them up before. One of them is the city limit uh, data. And, um, and so I want to, you can already see a preview of it here, um, but I'm going to want to download this. And so if I go to download, um, the one I'm going to want is to get a shape file. And you could totally imagine I could just click that and download it to my computer somewhere. And uh, I'm not going to do that because I want to work on my virtual machine, not on my computer. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to right click and then click here and say copy link address. And then what I want to do down here is get my, um, uh, oh, sorry. I want to get my, uh, in my terminal and I want to SSH. And that will take just a moment. And I want to go to October 30. And, uh, and you can see that here I have my two notebook files. Um, and I want to download that shape file. So I'm going to say wget. And I'm going to paste that. And that will download. I'm going to say ls. And, and there it is. And you see it kind of has this strange name. And, uh, and I'm going to call it something else. This step I'm going to say move db and i'm going to hit the tab key on my keyboard to complete that i don't want to type that whole awful thing and i'm going to rename that to zip city.zip i'm going to do that if i want to look inside of it i can uh, say on zip um i could say city.zip and honestly i could just run that and that would pull out everything inside of there to this directory instead i'm going to say dash l because i just want to see what's inside and, um, and what I see is that it contains a shape file here. And, and really that's most of the content, that's the big part. And then I have these other accompanying pieces that are also describing these geographic boundaries. I'm gonna come back here to my um, notebook. And, uh, and like I was saying, um, I need to figure out what I wanna put here. And so maybe what I'll try doing first is I'm just gonna put um, the name of that zip file which was, uh, after I renamed it, it was city.zip. I'm gonna run that, and uh, it's trying to complain here that uh, city.zip is not a recognized file format, um, which is a little bit of a lie. It turns out that uh, GeoPandas is capable of reading zip files. Uh, we just have to do something like this. We have to say protocol right here. Maybe you've seen this before, um, this kind of specifying a protocol. I mean, sometimes you might see HTTP colon slash slash something. Here I want to specify that the protocol I'm dealing with is, is ZEP. And, and so this whole thing is, um, I'm putting at the beginning, that's just specifying the protocol. And, and so don't get the idea that this is in uh, the, the top level directory on my computer. This is still, um, still, uh, same directory as my code, right? It's a local file or a local or kind of um, a relative path, I should say, sorry. It's a relative path. 
And, um, and so I'm going to run that. And let me take a peek at that. Actually, let me call it city because I'm going to have a lot of these pretty soon. I say city.head. And I, I see like before, while well, the city consists of a bunch of, of polygon, polygons. And, uh, and just like before, I can do things like this. I can say, um, you know, give me, give me position zero geometry. Right, so that's row zero geometry column. And, and there are all these different shapes that, that I can have, right? And I can draw through those. Uh, that'll make them a city. I guess really most of it is this one, uh, one big piece here. Okay, great. So I have my city and uh, I'm going to plot it. I guess I, there's actually four, only four pieces there. Um, and maybe maybe I'll just plot it down here as a separate thing. I'm going to say um, city dot plot, and I get this nice picture of the city. And um, and then what I want to do is uh, maybe make it a light gray color. So I'm going to say color equals uh, maybe I'll say something like 0 0.8. Generally, when we want to plot things on top of um, uh, on top of a, a map, you want the background to be a little bit lighter because um, then any points we plot on top of it are going to uh, really show up well. Maybe I'll make that even a little bit lighter still. That's good. Uh, what I may want to do is I might want to make um, add a lot of more features to here. I want to add um, the, the lakes, right? So the water system. Um, I, I want to add the, the uh, police stations and then the fire stations. And so I have to head back here and, and find all of that data. And so I'm going to head back and find some of that. Um, let's grab the lakes next. I'm going to say lakes. And rivers, I guess. Um, same thing. I need to make sure I'm getting the shape file. So I'm going to right click that, copy link address uh, down here. Um, last time, if I just hit the up arrow key, we can see the history that I had. Um, I, I did a w get with that URL. And then after that, I, I renamed it using the move command. I named it from this weird thing uh, to city.zip. Uh, I may actually show you a shortcut this time. Uh, how I can do it all in one step. I'm going to say wget, and I'm going to say dash capital O, and uh, O is just for output. I, I won't say all of output um, because I'm not able to. That's not illegal. I'm going to say O for output, capital O, and and I may call this, um, uh, I don't know, lakes.zep. I'm going to do that, and, uh, and then if I say ls here, I have both of these, city.zip and lakes.zip. Let, let me just peek inside the other one too. So I'm going to peek inside what do I have inside of lakes.zip. And, uh, and very similar to the other one, right? I have these collections of five files. So coming back here, um, I have that. And the, the lakes are going to be very similar uh, to my city. All right, so I'm going to do that. And, uh, and then I can say lakes.plot. And, uh, and what you're going to see is that it's creating a separate plot region, right? So I have, um, here is my city, here are my lakes. I'd like to combine those. And uh, the way I can do that is I can say AX equals something, right? Um, so maybe I'll say here, uh, when I run this, this is returning an axis uh, object to me. So I could say something like, you know, I call it AX a lot. Maybe I'm going to call it area for a change. I'm going to say AX equals this area that I just created. And, uh, and now I get this beautiful map where I have um, both the lakes and, and the city in the same picture. And um, right now the, the color is defaulting to blue. Um, uh, that's a slightly different blue. I, I don't like to depend on defaults because who knows, maybe it changes someday and then, then my code breaks. So I'm just gonna be very explicit that I want blue. Um, I could also do like a light blue or something like that. Um, I guess I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, okay, so so far so good. Um, let's get my other zip file. So I'm gonna head back here. And uh, and what else do I need? I need to grab, um, I need to have the fire stations. And, uh, and I'll grab these. You can see there's a few of them. Let me grab that shape file, w get paste dash o fire dot zip and uh and then coming back here i want to get the police as well police stations and i'm going to grab that one right click copy link address w get paste dash o 
release.zip and um and uh and then we head back here and I'm gonna draw these points on top of the on top of the map. All right, so I'm gonna read both of these in. I need to grab what do I need? I, I need my um uh oops, excuse me. Why is that not my my cursor is acting weird? I guess I'll just type it out. I need to grab the police data set and then uh, the the fire data set as well. Fire, fire. Um kind of very strange when I click on certain parts of the cell, it won't let me um highlight it. So I'm gonna do that. And then down here I'm gonna say um uh, fire dot plot and then ax equals area and um and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the police. I'm gonna say police dot plot in that same area. And I can see I have these points here. Um, it's choosing uh, blue and uh, orange for me. I, I can take control of that. I could say something like, um, I, I guess maybe fire uh, department should be red and the police should be blue. Uh, so I'll do that. And, uh, and now I'm actually realizing it was a bad idea to have my lakes be the same color. So maybe I'm gonna make my lakes um, light blue like I had before. Um, so that's good. So, so I can kind of see what's going on now. I can see where all of these um, uh, stations are located. I can see, um, for example, like down here, I have a police and fire station um, located right next to each other. Um, some more things I should do is uh, to make this better. Um, I, I should probably think about what if I need to print this in black and white or what if somebody who's colorblind is looking at it. Um, I should probably have different symbols uh, for different kinds of, of points. Okay, so so let me think here. What how can I do this? Um I want to I'm just looking up what the markers are in my notes, sorry. Um I am going to uh say for fire, I'm gonna say marker equals plus, just so that it looks a little bit different there, so I can see what's going on. Um other things I want to do is I want to get rid of that border around it so I, I can say for my um, ax object here right i can say dot um set axis off right i mean this is just telling me the latitude and longitude which i feel like is not useful information for like 99 percent of the people who would look at this map um i'm going to do that um, I, I probably want to have some sort of legend and uh, and for that i need to do this i need to import matplotlib.pyplot plot as plt and then down here i can say plt.legend and uh, it's complaining there was no labels to draw any sort of legend you can see they draw drew this weird empty box up here and um the reason that this is happening is when i'm, I'm plotting a regular data frame uh it can figure it out based on the column names that's not really the case here with these shape files. Um, so, so what I ought to do is when I'm plotting these points, I should say uh, fire, sorry, label equals fire, label equals police. And then I do that, I can actually get this nice legend text up here to the right. Um, now it's a little bit annoying that this text is right on top of the, the map. And I can control that. There's this location parameter I can pass in. And right now it's defaulting to something like top right. Oh, actually, I love error messages that when I do something wrong, it tells me what I should actually do. I guess it's defaulting to upper right. And um, and so I will change it to upper left, right? Because I just see, well, the way Madison is, um, I, I kind of have a big uh, uh, gap there in terms of what's out of our uh, jurisdiction. So that looks good. Um, I also want to probably... I don't want to have a frame on that, right? So it's worth spending time whenever you're making a plot to really make it polished, right? That kind of gives you credibility on some level. And uh, and I don't need that border, of course. I think people, it'll, it'll be very clear that that's a legend and uh, and not the actual, um, not actual points. Okay, so let me make this just a little bit larger. I'm gonna say you know, fig size equals maybe like 10, 10. And, uh, and this is a pretty decent uh, map. Now, 
And what, what are we doing? I mean, so often, what are we doing? We're kind of grabbing all these different shape files and finding out how we want to display each of them and, and so on and so forth and making sure we have a legend, right? Um, not, not, not super difficult once you get used to all of these uh, method calls, right? They become familiar. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about today is um, the resolution of these images. Uh, maybe it's a little hard to see in the video I'm recording, uh, but this is a little bit grainy. And um, when I'm talking about whether something's grainy, it's because of this uh, DPI, dots per square inch, uh, I guess not Department of Public Instruction, but dots per square inch. And, um, and any sort of image you have is made up of all these little points of, of color. Maybe you might call them dots, or, or maybe somebody might interchangeably call it pixels. And uh, having a higher resolution means that uh, we have kind of more of these little points of color per square inch. And, and so if I want to come back here, um, if I have a figure, I can actually say, well, what is my, what is my figure uh, uh, dot, dots per inch? Um, I, I guess I don't actually have a figure object. Um, I do have this AX object here, so I could say AX dot get figure. What figure contains that AX object? I'm so used to calling it uh, AX, I should do that. And I see there are 72 points um, per uh, 72 points per inch. And, and so I can control that. And, and that might matter a lot if I'm trying to make an image that I'm going to blow up for a poster or maybe use in a presentation or something like that. So I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to save this figure like so. I'm going to say, um, uh, I'm going to grab... Actually, let me let me just double check my notes here. Um, let, let me let me actually just put this fig in a variable because I'm going to use it a few times. Right, so I'm going to put that fig there, fig.dpi, and um, and I'm going to save it. I'm going to say fig.save fig, and I'm going to save a high resolution version, and I'm going to save a low resolution version, both as the high and low. Uh, dot png. And, um, and, and and so what I can do is I can specify the dots per square inch. Um, pr pretty good would be something like 300 points per square inch, or per inch, uh, no squaring going on here. Maybe for this one, I'll say, um, <laughs> let's actually just make it look really terrible, uh, just so we can see the contrast even um, in the video. Um, another thing we need to do when we're playing with these settings is that um, sometimes it gets weird about the, the white space margins. And so I'm just gonna say here, you know, just crop off any white space around the map in both cases. And so I'm going to run that. And, uh, and and that doesn't really do anything different, right? Because I'm just producing these files. And so if I come over here, I see I have my low resolution image. And then down here, I have my um, high resolution image. And it's not quite a fair comparison because it's just, um, you know, it's showing them as different sizes here. So, so if I really want to see the difference, I should load them both into my uh, notebook uh, at, at the same size, right? So I should get my high one that's at 300 and my low one that's at 200. So I'm going to create a new cell down here. And uh, maybe you remember we've imported this before. Um, we'll sometimes say from ipython.core.import, oh, what am I doing? Dot display import image. And uh, then we can directly load images. Uh, into this, right? I can load um, my high resolution image. Let's actually make it more dramatic. Let's do the low resolution image first. And I can specify my width and some sort of standard. And I can do that. And, uh, and then I can do my high resolution image at the same, same size. And, um, and hopefully you can see, let me see if I make this a little bit bigger, how terrible the first one is, right? I can't even can't even read this text up here. Um, the points are all blurry. The high resolution one looks uh, crystal clear. The text is clear. The points are sharp. And, uh, and, and so I always think about that. I, I don't think it's a very important detail until you're having a finished um, project and you want to make a poster or a presentation or something like that. Then, then think about uh, increasing your uh, dots per square inch. Okay, so I think that's all I have here.